uh, like a uh, the holiday green screen. screen error error or uh, <laughs> we're only uh, like 15 minutes late rather than like a full fucking you know hour late and uh, <laughs> 24 hours yeah, yeah I, I had the standby screen up at like a couple minutes after it was not too bearable too terrible um sorry folks um anyway you oh know, did you hit record yes i did you know all of us i'm me Even um you. this is shiver and we have paul who runs a bar um I love, I some space, space bar thanks you know. carbine edge and then there's also this fast cart guy down there i looked the wrong way at dawn you, you got to do the wave, Eric. Oh, Carbide Edge thank described. you very much, Carbide Edge. He even Edge. mentioned Melissa. He mentioned Melissa. Well, then you have to do the yeah. wave then. <laughs> I don't, Hi, I don't Melissa. Do the wave. As if you'd I ever do, watch this. I do the the the, the trumbling. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't look like it, you you have bunny ears going out. Ever since, ever <laughs> since, ever since, um, ever since CIG released that animation. Where they called it trumbling animation when you're falling off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of, that one, of, yeah. Instead of it's like like right now, where you kind of go you're like whoa as yeah. you're falling. Now, instead of that, it's like they, when they did it. It was like whoa. It was the <laughs> trumbling animation while your legs were moving? And I'm like, no one fucking does that. <laughs> <laughs> trying to stabilize themselves. <laughs> so this is trumbling now, apparently, in the UK. Well, evidently they do it in the UK. Maybe they maybe they fall different over there. They have they fall, they, fall, they fall they fall like, oh dear, I'm going to grab things. <laughs> the tea. Tell us, is that how you fall? Not the tea. Been a while, but yes. I discovered. Oh my! I appear to have fallen. I discovered that that the UK is so um so unprepared for heat that apparently at 29 degrees celsius their uh their asphalt starts to melt wow 29 yeah shiver was showing me all these things where people were like falling into the asphalt because it was melted and there were vehicles getting sucked into the asphalt because it was melted at 29 degrees celsius <laughs> Which I've is, seen some movies like that. Which for, is um, like for, for, for my for my American yeah. friend that that's like um, eighty degrees. It's like eighty five no, degrees Fahrenheit. 70. Yeah, eighty five degrees 70, Fahrenheit, 70, 70, 80. and and uh, and their asphalt is melting. So that's something else. <laughs> uh, this How was is... an ice pillow about forty minutes ago. Now it's just collecting sweat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the sweat pillow. As I told him earlier, I think you put I think you put a little bit too much tar in your asphalt over there. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering like why is it melting at eighty five degrees? That doesn't. We we genuinely do put a lot of tar in the road because we, we we expect it for rain, and even, our roads are even arched slightly mm -hmm. to yep. let the rain go into the gutter. Yep. But we haven't had any fucking rain because you <laughs> expect rain in fucking England. <laughs> <laughs> Jolly old fucking England. <laughs> oh boy. Um. All right. So we had some interesting things ha happen this week. Um, there was a few interesting bits on calling all devs. Um, chatting about the very many uh, many attachments to the Paul multi tool. Um, how they'll be starting to get that into the game with three point three. Um, so that you can, you know, like weld your ship back together when you accidentally blow it up by blasting a rock too hard. I haven't done that at all late lately. <laughs> um, that rock blasting. Frick. Some of them are hard. Um, well done. Anyway. Um, hard rocks. Yes. Mm. Yes. Very hard rocks. Um, also this week we heard some interesting new details and some, uh, encouraging new details about the environmental control system, how they are still planning to have like very, you know, you have a limited oxygen supply in a room and it's balanced against oxygen production. So if you put a hundred people in one room and there's no oxygen production in that room, they'll all die. Funny how that works. It would be nice if they also added things like, um, the ability to decompress sections of the ship. They will. But I think that requires. I know they they're going to, but like, there needs to be a control panel for that. Like, hey, like we're gonna take off, take out the you know dragonfly from the back of the cutlass, 
but if we open the back, it's just going to go all the oxygen. So it's going to be all, oh. the, all the all the all the all the life giving oxygen is going to disappear. And so when it comes back in, a long time ago, a very long time ago, uh, they showed off a work in progress. Galaxy far, far away. Yeah. Um, they showed off a work in progress panel control panel in the caterpillar before it was done where you could uh, it was a panel where you could control all the doors in the caterpillar from from like the bridge that was a long time ago but but they definitely are thinking about that and i i would love that you're like oh look they're boarding me oh darn yeah <laughs> well you've Fred. also got you could do the whole faster than light thing as well because if you've got a fire in a certain room you just open the door and Exactly. Exactly. It's perfect. And then you just have to deal with the fact that half your ship's blown up, and not that it's on fire. Well, it's better than it's better than you know three fifths of the ship blow up than the whole ship blows up, right? Exactly. Um. So one of the so they were talking about you know there'll be uh, welding and cutting attachments for the paw. There will be the repair attachments. There'll also be a mini tractor beam attachment so that you can move boxes around, which I think is cool. Which I think actually existed before. It was the one that was the mini tractor beam that was at the bottom of the gun, uh, of the pistol. Oh, yeah, yeah, from, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Um, <laughs> so then ATV came along, and there was great dismay because it, like, Basically, there was much wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> it was, it was like, so yeah. long this week. I just, I just couldn't find the time to watch it. It was four minutes long, and they basically just said, "Hey, three point two's out," and that's it. Mm -hmm. We're done. They did show off some 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 cool stuff with uh, the Hurston uh, yeah. security yeah. guard uniform. I mean, so, that was the least cool. they could do is the least they could do is bring back the kid they had from last the, the previous week. Bring them back. The kids. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but apparently that was too much to ask. So, oh well. Um, but then we have one person here who saw RTV. So, Paul, what exactly yeah, happened on RTV this week? Todd Pappy said a lot of cool things. Um, that's that's that. basically how to put it. Uh, let's see. Talked about a starter reliance ship or sorry, starter science ship. Um, and I'm looking through some of the, some of the comments here to remember everything. Uh, they talked about the, um, uh, what is it? Um, See, the, the only real dedicated science ship we have at this point is the Endeavor, right? Yeah. It's yeah. freaking huge. Oh, well, no, the, um, <laughs> the Reliant Send. variant. Oh, yeah, 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 the the Reliant Send, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's but um, they also talked about how they are they do not have immediate plans for doing uh, orbits of like planets and moons, um, but they do want to do it eventually. It's just going to require it's not that they can't do it; it's that it's going to require a strike team to do it. And uh, the, the the complicated parts are things like hey, if you're plotting a course between pla a planet and another planet, by the time you get to the other planet, that planet will have moved. So you know it, you will have to find some way around that either like i'm guessing splines or some other kind of tracking uh i think it'll just multiple plot points i think it'll just be math in the background where it will it will see how fast your destination is moving and then it will mm -hmm. uh calculate where it needs to take you to um mm -hmm. in order to intercept yeah. it at a point to where space. it's going to be not yeah. where it is exactly. um but that's gonna but that requires calculations and physics uh physics and That'll all that kind of stuff decimal. They don't have time for um right away they also talked about how the um uh the foip is getting progress they actually had a recent um uh kind of version come in and uh that re recent version fixed the problem of calibration where before you'd have to every once in a while you're you're after a while your face would get unhooked hooked with from the from the model so you'd have to like Put your face in the center hit, hit a button to recalibrate and do it again uh, and they fixed it so that you don't have to do it they said something about possible voice integration for calibration but then the, there was also the issue of voice calibration of someone making you say calibrate in some way so that you would recalibrate your foip uh <laughs> kind of trick trick you into doing stuff so uh they i think they've solved that problem so it's like auto calibrates now so 
Um, they uh, didn't they also say that the uh, application itself will not be uh, will not have a great enough resolution or latency to allow you to move your gimbals accurately. Exactly. They said that they wouldn't suggest you trying to rely on that. That that it's not a replacement for track IR. Track IR is more. Uh, they also said um, <clears throat> the whole C, the whole C is not on the immediate roadmap because they've got to solve a lot of different problems, including cargo, because they have to figure out how cargo is going to work in loading and unloading, um, and like the sizes of different cargoes and such. Um, they also, the spindles are going to require their own fix. And then also by the time they put the whole C in, um, if they try to put it in now, even if they have the other problems fixed, you know, tomorrow, it would ruin the economy because the amount of, uh, the amount of, of cargo you can drop with a whole C is economy breaking. So basically uh, they need so more. They have have it's not more. that we have much of an economy though. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does. We have, everything's in the back end servers now. So like if you. Uh, if you buy, like, agri like right now, agricultural supplies are super valuable because you can buy them at science um, stations and at, like, major stations for, like, 60 to 70 cents and you can uh, uh, per unit, and you can sell them at 80 cents at the farms. So you can get a good prof profit margin if you have a large va uh, volume of, uh, of agricultural supplies. And this is but why people bought the whole scene in the first place. But as but as that um, as you start as it that's people have been doing that the price of agricultural supplies to buy has gone up from like sixty six to about seventy five mm -hmm. over the last because everything is linked together in the back end servers so the demand is literally going up for agricultural supplies so they're charging more for agricultural supplies but this the demand is still the same at uh, at the uh, locations so people the so like the the sellers are realizing that people want it so they're increasing it whereas the buyers have not increased the price at the, the cost so so this whole sea could totally ruin the economy <laughs> In the, basically i think it's all down to there aren't very many economic nodes right now and npc and economic activity isn't in yet no. so like the the way the whole that's kind of the whole thing is that the star citizens economy won't be able to be hugely influenced by players because of that whole balance where 90% of the people people in the game will be NPCs and 10% will be players. So the NPCs balance the economy and then players screw with it basically. <laughs> but that's not in the game yet. So Right now, players just screw with it, and there's no balancing going on. <laughs> and there's very few economic nodes right now. Like, you're basically down to Levski and Olisar, and then the rest of them are pretty minor. Uh, oh, I no, I, I, comments. I'm just, I'm just kind of disappointed. But, I mean, I, I don't have a whole series. I have a whole B, but I do like the whole series. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They'll come. Uh, it's uh, it is kind of funny that um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, they basically got the ship most of the way done, and then they ran into technical problems. And then they're like, "Hey, if we actually fix these technical problems, the whole sea will break everything." So we're yeah. going to wait a little bit. <laughs> um, so the whole sea is for not reference. Getting it in the game technically wouldn't be a challenge. It's more down to if we put it in the game no one else will be able to play the game, really. Mm. <laughs> is uh, the bot not working? The bot is not working. Nope. I need the Earl for the um, question. I will do that. So, yeah, that's that pretty much it. There's a lot of other discussions about people talking about, um, oh, what was it? Uh, like the first 10 minutes or 15 minutes is just Disco talking about how they're doing new formats and stop being angry. Stop, stop, stop screaming so much that... But you, don't yeah, put a four-minute ATV with nothing in it. At least if it's going to be four minutes, put stuff in it. No, I was going to say, that, that always works. Telling us not to be angry always stop people from being angry. Well, I, 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 I think a lot of people don't understand the context. For those of you who are not in the U.S., which is apparently like 40% of the community, um, and the rest of my American brethren who apparently... Um, don't understand that a holiday means that the U.S. wasn't working either. It was a holiday, July Fourth. It's when we took sh uh, when we left Shivers people, um, and uh, uh, threw a bunch of tea. <laughs> uh, 
And um, uh, didn't as they of, say that it wasn't of, short because of the holiday, though? It's short because the 3.2 just won't, got released, yeah. so they don't have a lot of information. Yeah. But the holiday sure, certainly impacts the the time that they have mm-hmm. because they don't have as much time. So before people lose their fucking minds over that kind of stuff, just like let's give it a couple weeks, be more than just like, hey, one thing. Ah, I'm unsubbing. I'm unsubbing because I, I, I because of a three point three minute and thirty three second. You know. Don't forget as well, they've only just got three point two out the door as well, so they're probably yeah. like recalibrating towards uh hot fixing 3.2 and slowly moving on to 3.3 so mm. it's there's probably not much for them to say other than so yeah we're working on hot fixes there we're starting work over here yeah so they got said that's the other thing they talked about they talked about how uh ocs and they have they even have like they have everybody on deck for ocs like they have they've put people who don't usually work on ocs on ocs to help test it and work on it yeah, so, because uh, it's basically a um, – they have to have it. 3.3 mm-hmm. doesn't work, work without – they have to have OCS. OCS. Mm-hmm. This isn't an optional one. They will kick all the other features out of 3.3 to put OCS Even in. Even Hurston. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything will get removed um, so OCS can get in, but they're fairly confident that they can do that. Don't, don't oh, kick my feelings out. Again. Just because OCS, network bind coming and coming in, is not instantly going to mean you can run at 120 F, um, 20 FPS with your monster PC or whatever. It may not have that much of an impact at first. That's you have to expect the miracle drop. What it, what it should yeah. do is it should prevent you from using so much fucking memory because it separates yes. the memory from... Exactly. So your RAM won't get eaten up, so you won't have as many memory leaks and crashes because of that. And it they've also said it should stop the pop-ins and the, 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 the huge spikes when large ships get spawned because of the compartmentalization of OCS. So, but Paul, I heard that the technology for that is decades away. It's decades away. 90 days tops. Um... <laughs> I always have to do that. Um, we can also, you can also talk about the drama if you missed the drama. Oh, about, what was the uh, drama? There's never any drama in the city. Did, 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 did you miss community. the the fake the fake um, glass door review? Yes, oh, I, I there was drama. Oh, here we go. Go drama. Do it. Okay, so there was a fake glass door review from the senior physics developer who just left. Um, John Pritchett. John Pritchett. John Pritchett. Yeah. Um, someone wrote a fake review on Glassdoor, basically claiming because Glassdoor works is you don't put your name down, but you put down what your title was, yeah. and there's no confirmation as far as I understand. Anyone can write one and claim. So how did that work? Name. I mean, why do people use that? Never mind. Go ahead, please. So it's called Glass. It's it's called Glassdoor because the original. It's not just for CAG. It's for like every oh, yeah. company out yeah. there. Every employer. And the idea, that way you can you can not break NDA and talk about what you did uh, or how bad or good a company is. Um, and the Glassdoor review was fairly, it looks fairly reasonable. And then they started saying some things in the, in the comms which parrot stupid ideas about how CIG runs. And with basically the concept of like, oh, we've not been able to do anything for years and the game is great, but it's not gonna come out for another 10 years. Like technology is not available for another 10 years. Um, and CIG is, is a hard working. So they, basically they tried to like mimic what you'd expect to see a, a CIG employee say, but then also slip in their own kind of bullshit. And um, apparently Montoya, Nubifier and uh, Board Gamer saw this and were like, because they know John Pritchett, they said, this doesn't seem right. And so they asked John Pritchett himself and he went on Facebook and was like, yeah, that wasn't me um, at all. <laughs> So that's still that's still a thing. Uh, Did it get taken down or like edited or something? He re- he he reported it to Glassdoor and to CIG, but I haven't I haven't checked it on that drama since then. But know that that kind of shit still happens. Someone's still doing it. Oh yeah, I mean, and we yeah we know where it's coming from. Anyway, good times. <laughs> Basically. Uh, oh, that was some of the other things they said about other than OCS. Because, like, again, watch RTV. RTV has mo- past the 15 minute mark because Disco is just kind of explaining what's going on. But they had Sean Tracy and Todd Pappy. And uh, so they talked, like, Sean Tracy and Todd were talking about, uh, let's see, what else they're doing? Um, that the, they're fixing ESP right now for 3.2.1 for all of us combat people. So that means that we can actually shoot things. 
Um, they're also fixing the mobile glass issues where like you're, you're not seeing the, the, the res, the, um, what is it called? Um, the streaming or the one that lets them do the holograms and stuff like that. Render to texture. Render to texture. They're trying to update the render to texture. So you can see individual, the individual object you're buying, fix the duplicate duplication on like items and stuff like that. So if you go into your, like your ship loadout, it has double everything you, you have. So it's like two power plants, even though it's only one power plant and so on and so forth. Um, so they're trying, that's, that's some of the stuff they're trying to fix up right now. So I just wanted to take a look yep. at that. That is still up there. Uh, it's still up there. Yep. Yeah. Whatever. And they're talking about, yeah, they're, Talking about time frames in the multiple doesn't deck, matter. Multiple doesn't decades. matter. Move on. Move on. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Why we can't talk drama? What else is there to talk about? Well, who gives a shit? Who's written what on glass door? Fuck it. Apparently not well, the UK. Man. Well, the the issue is more um, people slip these kind of things in, and then someone ends up using it as like a battering ram and comes up and be like, look, see, they hate everyone, and they try to spread like that to the non-Star Citizen backers or to people who Yeah, but then it works both ways. You know, any one of us could just go on there and say, it's the best company in the world. I got given three fucking sports cars working there is, and was given blowjobs on entry. It's an amazing place. Is, but, it, but no one's doing that. Just as, That's, and, Yeah, well, true, but... You know, that's, it's that's just as bad as writing a negative review as writing something that's entirely positive. <laughs> I, I, I foresee Relay's future. <laughs> you see, uh, the, the time, also, time like this, where, where I wish we, we could like accumulate or, or like to start accumulating all the salt content generated from the drama, and then when it's uh, during like a nor'easter in the winter, just drop all the salt there and just melt all the snow. But no, it doesn't work like that. It works like also, the roadmap um, is no longer going to be updated the week of a release. So they, there's no roadmap update this week. That, I, oh, I, I, think that's, I think that is entirely reasonable. And actually, I personally remember, I don't think it was updated the week after 3.1 released either. They just didn't say anything about it. Mm, no, it was updated, was but it, it was updated like, but it was like nothing. Was yeah, updated. <laughs> it was very, very it was like, minimal form. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and they didn't release 3.6 roadmap from 3.1 until 20 days after it was released. Yeah. So that makes sense. Or you they mean 3.5? Three, three yeah. No, 3. Point, yeah, 3.5. Yeah, 3. 3.5. Yeah, 3.5. They didn't release the 3.5 quarter uh, after till 20 days, like uh, April 20th. They basically after, need to spend a couple of weeks after sort of reassessing because they just spent a huge amount of effort going, hey, to get to get – the patch up the door they need to spend in a week or two reassessing what the next one looks like and where they're going further than that it's um it just it makes sense it's not anything to be upset about um and there was a newsletter sent yesterday yeah. um evening they had a new sneak peek it was a hanger thing i'll put the link and um yeah that looked cool it was like a utility hanger I yeah like you, you, I, I can't pronounce that word. You look, you look like, uh, Uti Utilitarian? Thank you. There you go. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, also, the July subscriber bonus I actually like. They're moving away from weapons. You now get uh, a Michael Jackson jacket or a Twitch purple jacket. Oh, nice. Uh, you got a picture of that? I'll, I got to link it right here. Um, yeah, the straight up, there's a straight up Michael Jackson jacket you can get if you if you subscribe. Do you get one glove or two? No gloves. No uh, gloves. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a mixture between the Michael Jackson, uh, Michael Jackson jacket, and like the uh, Back to the Future Marty's like futuristic jacket. Can you give me a link to the picture? Thriller. Yeah. I'm, Can you give me a, a link to the picture? Beta. Though I am doing yeah, that right this now. This is this oh, is wait, the it's already there. Oh, for the for the oh yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a subscriber. Itself. Thank you. Oh, that's in the um, newsletter. Yeah. Love it. And I love the here's... fact that it's called the Centurion Jacket. It kind of gives then... me hope that you'll have this sequence where you're just behind this beam of light and these things start attaching to you and you can become a submarine <laughs> or a scuba diver. It'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Yeah. 
according to the newsletter, they call it the Dragonfly Jacket. Sure. Yeah, right? <laughs> they can call it whatever they want. I'm liking, I'm liking that they're doing more, like, they're just doing more stuff. It's, it's more than just, like, now we have more armor, now we have more clothing, and we're going to get more clothing. It feels like, like the teams that are in charge of armor and clothing, they're just like, hey, your shackles are off, go nuts. Like, enjoy yourself. <laughs> well, they've been ramping up. Nick fashion. <laughs> similar, to, similar to the way the ship pipeline was, they've been ramping up the clothing pipeline for years. Um, you know, back to like when Megan Cheever was there and she was talking about how they were ramping up the, you know, like it, it, they've been slowly working up to this for a long time. And it's, uh, it's good to start seeing it come out more. Um, One of the things that's always frustrated me in multiplayer games is <clears throat> they always do loads of clothing options for a female avatar. And then you're very limited <laughs> by male because all the, you know. You get a, a shirt. A huge chunk of people play a female avatar. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I, I just like want to see a bit of... Yes. Mm. Okay, mm. I want to highlight this one particular uh, screenshot from the screenshot contest because I love it. It was in the newsletter. <clears throat> it's an impressive shot of an explosion. Oh, and they had this um, one screenshot with, with three armors. I'm not sure if that's from ATV or... That was ATV with the those, cloaks. With the cloak, thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, let me see if I can find that. So now you can uh, pretend yes, to be Space Strider. That is, uh, yes, it was Space Strider. But it's the um, <laughs> security armor for the uh, for Hurston, which I'm going to get in my, my, lore, my lore post moment and be like, all right, this is actually very appropriate because Hurston... Is like uh, is like a feudalistic society where the Hurston family is at the top because they've been an aristocratic family since before time began. Um, apparently, they've been making weapons as, since the time of like the Mesopotamians. Is their is their like claim to fame, <laughs> and um, that they um, uh, they own a planet, so they are the kings of 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 this planet, and then they have. Their managers are like 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 lords, and anyone who works for them are like vassals. So the the security guards are like knights. So that's why they're dressed like knights <laughs> in terms of their so social status. So they kind of stuck this into. I didn't see a lot of fanfare about it, but the June um, monthly report is out as well. Mm -hmm. Um, came out uh, on the fifth, and there's some good stuff in there. Uh, I would recommend taking a look at it. There's some. Uh, there is like a derelict. Uh, the their work on the derelict hammerhead is in there, which is really cool. They also have a couple new screenshots of the uh, F eight lightning in there, uh, a couple different Ooh. deliveries. Yeah. And um, also, one thing that I always love to see is they have uh, what looks to me like um, a new planet. Uh, images of a new planet. Maybe it may have been. It may be one it's of Hurston, moon. Moon, Hurston, Hurston's Hurston's moon. moons. Oh yeah, it's Magda. Okay, yeah, it's one of Hurston's mm -hmm. moons. A uh, great picture of it though. So I will link that as well in here. Looks like those uh, giant salt formations of Africa. I can't remember, like West Africa, I think, or you know East Africa. Those giant ancient ones that have been built. They're not salt. They're like microbes. They've been building for like millions of years. I. I just want to say. Go ahead. I just want to say that cloak picture I got from Wee Hamster. I want to give him props for, for that picture. Thank you, Wee Hamster. Um, I love seeing all the new worlds. That's my my thing. And the best part about the moon, moon <laughs> one of the things that Chris said a couple of weeks ago was that the plan for the moons was um, they were going to do all the moons in a month which is significantly uh, faster than they did the moons of Crusader because it took them like six, seven months to get them all like lined up and finished. Yeah, they got to so. they got to pick it up and they know they do. But this is I mean, this one's always going to be really slow. It's the first system. Um, mm -hmm. it, the hope is that going forward, you have a lot of the biome sets already. You have a lot of experience actually building worlds because I think I counted one time. I think there's something like 14, 12 or 14 worlds in Stanton. 
that need to be made because with all the moons mm -hmm. and the and the actual planets so there's a lot of work there and then uh, hopefully when you go forward there's uh, the other ones happen a little quicker you can also you could also take on some of the lesser populated systems um, would be much faster because then you don't have to put in as many space stations or landing zones so like pyro doesn't have mm. many much in terms of landing zones well that, and that's the thing to understand is that people say oh it's impossible them they're, they're taking so long to get to get hurston out on hurston but um stanton out stanton, yeah. then how long how, how they expect to get all these other ones out it's like because stanton is unusually populated every yep. single planet is populated like um nix has no planets that are populated Nix yep. is completely empty except for Levski. Levski on Delamar, which is an asteroid in an asteroid belt. That's it. Like they have planets, but no one lives there. It's it's a it's a outlaw site. And I mean, I, I, I think Pyro is probably high up in their list too because you can already they've pointed this out a couple of times. You can already see it in the sky from Stanton. Mm -hmm. So they obviously have some plans for it. Go ahead, no, I'm going to be careful about how I say this, but it, it, say say I was in charge of how to direct the. Uh, <laughs> way to develop stanton because you know it's got so many archetype planets and moons in it that any thing you implement can be changed in such a way to be easily or far more easily recreatable once you've made the initial thing he's trying well, he's oh, trying to it. say i'm, I'm just gonna be quiet now <laughs> What did you that, was to pretty, that was oh. pretty good evasion. I like that. <laughs> How do I say this without saying it? Yeah. <laughs> How do I say this so I don't get sued? That's right. <laughs> um. But uh, yeah, I, I I always love disease work on new worlds. Um, the, one of the things people I, I've said it before, but it, it's worth yeah, noting. Driver. Thank you, Stevie Madman. Um, ah, thank you, Stevie. <laughs> can, we, uh, can we just adopt the way that, that Paul does it? Because that's like adorable. I love that one best. No. <laughs> Paul does it that way. I do it this way. Uh, Eris breaks his shoulders. Um, <laughs> it's good. Is that why Eris uh, hasn't been on recently? Did he, did, he, did he play goalie a little too much? Is that what's, what's going on? No, he got eaten, let's run he got eaten by a moose. <laughs> yeah. He lost in the moose punching fight. Those terrible, dangerous, uh, carnivorous moose up here. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, one of the things with 3.3 is if they do get the, the um, playable area they want in, it's a huge expansion from like it'd be the first actual planet first of all uh because all mm -hmm. we have right now is moons uh then it'll be four moons and then uh the rest stops are coming in with 3.3 as well so there'll be a whole bunch of rest stops rest stops populated throughout the game universe and so the rest stops the truck stops rest stops have um also have hangers yeah and hurston has hangers <clears throat> and which gives me hope that that like Grimhex will eventually have its hangers working, um, and, and those sorts of things. So there's a lot of the hangar tech is looks like it's also being set up for 3.3 as well because you're gonna have to have an ability to like log out in a hangar that way you're not having to like f off somewhere or the ability to rent um, space in a uh, an easy hab, um, which I don't think is necessarily early on in 3.3, but that's the kind of the, the, the direction they're moving as well. So totally. Um, CS digital design brought up something very helpful. Um, uh, pyro links to Nix, which links to Odin. So if you have mm. Stanton to pyro to Nix to Odin, you have four connected systems. All four of those systems have been worked on in some fashion uh, at this point. Mm. Um, so you might start to see that because Odin is Squadron 42 system. So mm -hmm. at this point, you're probably seeing the start of what the initial, like, larger PU will look like when they start adding extra systems. Because they could, I think, f um, not not necessarily fast, but much faster than Stanton. They could add in a system like Pyro or Nix where there's very little, uh, I mean, Nix is, Nix is, Delamar is already done. 
all they have yeah. to do is all the other stuff in the system that isn't populated, which is got to be somewhat easier. Yeah. Um, but you still have to you still have to make the biomes and all that kind of yeah. stuff and make sure like on the planets and even if it's a dead planet, it still has some some type of biome and the moons, which may have outposts or abandoned outposts yeah. and that kind of stuff. So you still it's probably about the same level as making like an entire system like Nix is probably the same level as making uh, the Crusader system in terms yeah. of difficulty. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, <coughs> so you can start to see where they're going with that anyway. Um, probably for the initial, cause I, I was always, I was always thinking they must be putting Odin in somehow because I mean, there's no point in finishing the system for squadron 42 and then leaving it out of start of, of the persistent universe, mm -hmm. especially when you only have a couple systems to begin with anyway, uh, in the game. So, um there's there's only 35 systems that are ue controlled and of the non-ue controlled there's like maybe 10 so that's we're only talking about 40 real systems that you can start off with uh which sounds like a lot but when something like 60 percent of them have maybe one planet in them that's populated mm -hmm. uh, and of those populated only like 10% are like Terra levels or Stanton levels where you have like the full planet that's been colonized. Probably so. the hardest thing they have still to do is, uh, or actually two worlds um, in terms of near term future. Uh, and that's uh, Terra and um, Terra prime specifically and uh, earth. 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 Yeah. Um, Welcome to earth. Welcome to earth. Terra Prime and Earth have both have the same issue in that they both have a lot of history. One thing with Stanton is it's actually it's been built up quickly, but it's actually a very new system, so they didn't have to do any of that. Like the, the stuff they've talked about, we're trying to show the aging of the architecture and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. That's all in their plans, but they didn't really have to do it for this system because there was uh, the whole system was settled very recently. Um, 2903 is when it first was settled exactly so, like 30 or 40 years it's not much yeah. um, mars is colonized but it's different so Col mars yeah. would be is also another one of those complicated ones because it's got the oldest architecture outside of earth because there's like the the main city of mars is uh, at the old research post the first research post on mars so it's named after the the project that colonized mars so it's like you at the very center you have this really old stuff and then it pulls out some of the newer stuff they tried to terraform it and they fucked it up or did they actually eventually successfully terraform because there was a big they, accident and then they kept going they tried to terraform it and fucked it up and it took them another 50 years to actually make it work and and stick um yeah, but killed like but, what 3200 people on the surface yeah. when they when the because, atmosphere collapsed because it was a day away mm. from being labeled a success so nobody was wearing their environmental suits yeah um, so and I think I think the most interesting thing the most interesting thing about Mars is that they had an automobile opening in orbit. <laughs> that would be really cool. Please, please CIG. Yes, please. the electric automobile. Yes, it needs yeah. to be there. Um, and and I, I think they should rename the the first colony to Big Falcon Colony. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's nothing in lore that says that we didn't have. Outposts or um, like like colonies on Mars before the terraformation, yeah. so you could easily have Elon's <laughs> landing or something like that. <laughs> they, totally need to do that. <laughs> they, they need to do is have Elon's landing and have um, it be a crater. Have it be what? I'd be a crater. A crater. Okay. Elon's, Elon's landing is a crater, just because Elon Musk always talks about how he likes to die on Mars, just not on impact. <laughs> yep. Um, speaking of which, if anybody wants a short update, we got something really cool about BFR today, which we haven't really heard a lot of solid news about BFR lately. Um, uh, he was, Elon Musk was asked on Twitter about, uh, the, the weather takeoff capabilities of BFR because Falcon 9 is notoriously kind of, um, twitchy when it comes to weather because it's really, really long. For how wide it is it's very 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 skinny rocket uh bfr is pretty beefy it, it's got a lot of girth <laughs> considering um, it's a six isn't it a six meter nine range, meter like, like, nine, nine meter, meter diameter, diameter rocket yeah 
and um, anyway, he said it's, that it's, it's a he said that it's all weather rocket we use. Sorry, all... I, was, I was making a joke about how it's the biggest biggest rocket we use to uh, to punch the sky <laughs> with our giant space penises. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, Shiva, you can fit a whole family in there. <laughs> Uh, Elon said, uh, yeah, he, he said that the BFR is all weather. Uh, it can take off in 300 kilometer an hour high altitude winds and 60 kilometer an hour ground winds. Um, and he also mentioned that it can also land in 60 kilometer an hour ground winds. Um, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, winds are the biggest problem for um, Falcon 9 because of how long it is. It makes it a little bit, um, I can't remember the term, there's a specific term for it in aerospace, but I can't remember what it is. Um, but it, uh, it's, it's, you know, because it's long and thin, it has, it has um, some susceptibility to, like, breaking if it gets hit by really, really heavy winds. Um, mm. Wind shear, I guess. But Yeah, uh, that's, we'll the only, that's the only problem, is that the last time something the size of the BFR was launched, it was the... Um, Oh, the N one, I want to say. Well, the in the, terms the of Russian. And you're it's, talking about it's phys same... physical size or thrust. Physical size. Uh, well, the yeah, Saturn V was actually a little bit physically larger than than the, than the BFR. BFR has twice the thrust of Saturn V, but it's just because it's a more modern rocket. Um, it's the, not actually the, uh, physically larger. The Soviet version of the of this of the, the N one was ridiculously similar. large. Yes, but it, it never. Was, it was also... It never flew. No. Um, but th that's the problem is, is that what Elon Musk is doing with the BFR, what, what SpaceX is doing with BFR is similar to what the Russians did, which is we don't have big thrusters. Let's just put a bunch of little thrusters on it to make it go higher, which is fine, except for the fact that that's what caused the N1 to go. There's one very important difference between the two. The N1 tried to do a lot of things at once. It had many, many engines, which is something they're trying to do with BFR and they did with Falcon Heavy. Um, the Russians tried to go a step further and they tried to do fuel cross feed, which no one has ever been able to get to work properly. This mm -hmm. means that all of the fuel tanks are connected together. So all the fuel tanks can connect, can uh, supply any of the engines on the vehicle. And, um, it, uh, it led to the rocket exploding repeatedly mm -hmm. <laughs> when it tried to launch. And it, it basically makes the rocket much, much, much more complex than it needs to be. And SpaceX has intentionally, uh, they looked at it for a little while, but now they are intentionally avoiding fuel cross feed because it causes things to blow up. So um, one of the reasons I think that's they a actually... pretty cross feed. <laughs> All right, well, hold on, hold on. Let's stay, let's stay, let's, 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 let's prevent people from randomly, uh, um, reporting us for not being on the right the right side okay. star citizen is a game that's awesome yes. and we talked about it by 40 minutes before this yep Go ahead. well we're i'm only <laughs> i'm only going to stay on this topic for another like 10 seconds i was just going to say that the reason that they launched falcon i think the reason they went ahead with launching falcon heavy even though it doesn't have a lot of payloads lined up is that it has 27 engines and bfr has 31 so it's very good mm. in practice you know and I just want to let people know that I'm being quiet because I, I don't I don't want people to think that I have rocket envy. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I do want to I, I do want to to bring up last time we talked with with Fast Car, One of the things that I talked about was um, um, the new Xbox um, controller. Oh yeah, the, the controller, the adaptive controller. Yeah, have you have you taken a look at it since then? I took a, I, I did take a look at it, and it's expensive, so I'm going to hold off of, uh, on it r r before I um. But I, I I did investigate it, and there's this one-handed thing that you can connect to the to the, to the whole, whole controller, but that's that's another fifty dollars or something like that. So it's like one hundred and fifty dollars total or something total or something like that, and I don't really have the deck space for it. That's the other problem. Okay. So yeah, there's a whole lot of issue. Uh, Contribute factors before I decide to get it, but I, I did take I a look at it. And thank you, because because I know you're you're you you always looking for inputs that are easier for you to use with like one hand and yeah. that stuff. So like uh, so, and there's a bunch of games coming out. Well, not a bunch, but quite a few games coming out that I would be interested in and maybe using. Um, like um, for the Horizon Four comes out the week before um, Citizen Con, 
Um, so it's it's a driving simulator, but maybe it might be interesting to try to use your, your adaptive controller with that. Yeah. If only you could use your car as a controller. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man. Right? Oh, that would be awesome. I like that idea. I, I'd, I'm really interested in seeing how that would work with Star Citizen as well, because it seems like a decent enough controller that it could actually act almost like a like a HOTUS. Um, yeah. Because it's got like big, like, like the two big, like, like the, the two big, two big button buttons, like that are like, that are like, you can like move around a little bit as well. They almost look like the control panel on the, um, on the Knox, not the Knox, the, uh, the Scout, the Cartuol. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Cartuol Scout. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. The two, like, yeah. Yeah. You may be able to like, like, uh, dual stick it with the, uh, with, with that, those as well. It'd be kind of cool. As you like, we put two half orbs on them, it'll be exactly like this. this, this exactly. <laughs> what, Shiver? Go ahead, Shiver. You can <laughs> call it the Alpine it. control system. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are giant ninja turtles, so it makes sense that they'd have two large <laughs> orbs to manhandle. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm just so... thinking about the up eye control system now. You have little <laughs> dials on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to questions. We only have five questions, so please. Uh, let me put that questions. in. I don't want to be singing. I don't want to sing. Oh, I, I, I sing last night on um on the Friday night show. Remember that song, Silver? So yeah, if you don't yeah. want me to sing, they can put those, get those questions in. All right. So first question is from Brivals. Why do you think they aren't focusing on the hull A and hull B? Because they don't have the, the spindle technology working yet. They, they first want to um, work on a hull C and then they work on a variant. Yeah. yeah I think so hull C is the main one and then the other variants will be put in afterwards. Basically, it's the like the flagship of the... the series, isn't it? Yeah. The hull B and A are a bit of a unique hull i'm sorry for that horrible pun um but uh i think the idea is to make the hull c first and then basically just uh use it as a template to make the other four uh mr squarebag asks uh shiver how's brexit going <laughs> They, well, they uh, apparently, uh, Theresa May has forced the cabinet to uh, agree to some sort of um, thing, uh, which will be a, end up being a soft Brexit. It hasn't officially gone through the House of Commons yet. There is a good chance that Tory hard bench hard backer benchers will not be in favour of it because they they just want to fuck off. Um, and this is a soft Brexit. She hasn't committed to whether or not uh, EU citizens will get the special rights or not. Uh, they haven't even said anything as far as I know about the Irish border so it, mm, some progress so roughly by 2066 they'll have some idea of what Brexit looks like <laughs> well they have to be out by 2020 I think oh, yeah, I thought wow. 2020. that's fast oh boy we've triggered, we've triggered article 21 I think it was so well, the question they have is... to be out by a certain date so the question is, will, will Brexit happen before it starts to start to in your Yes. It's a race. Yes, but I, I tried to, I tried to take a I tried to take a clip just now and it's not letting me. I'm not sure why. I'm actually yeah, I'm quite okay there. with that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um Brivals eighty four asks with ATV and CIG's new directive of giving more condensed content, do you think we will still need the community members breaking things down like Nubifier, STL Youngblood, and so on? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, well, let me, let me just expand about Like, they've already said that they will con continue doing what they're doing because they do have an audience and people actually prefer the way or, or like the way that, that they break down the news. So, yeah, I don't see their, their, those the youtube um, people are having problem now the reason why cig is doing this is because literally nubifier was stealing their audience like relay steals the audience of cig because relay is basically like hey here's the summary go 
like so people take about 10 minutes to read the summary or let two minutes to read the summary rather than 10 or 20 minutes to watch the actual ATV or some case. Yeah, but the ATV actually had pictures on CGI and good stuff like yeah. that. Then you get the dopamine rolls, which people, which people put uh, that, that one guy puts out on Reddit all the time as well, which is just the, the pictures and the, and, and the, and the videos. And she uh. just it up, so it's just that. And um, literally these, they, they steal their viewership. And um, the other problem is, is that when you have um, Relay interpreting the news, people take the interpretation of Relay or Nubifier or, you know, as the what CIG said rather than what CIG actually said. And so <laughs> people lose their minds over something that is summarized, which wasn't necessarily completely correct. It's not the fault of Relay or anybody else. It's just them basically taking what they could and trying to make it as sure as possible. And um, so CIG doesn't want to have that happen anymore. They don't want to have CIG Nakara being quoted as uh, um, in, in, in the freaking, you know, in Kotaku uh, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's never happened before. So uh and uh, so <laughs> well, you know, Relay, relay is, is a circle site for CIG after all. Yeah. It's part of the reason we, why Relay is getting attacked is because people assume that Relay is just... We got that like, big CIG money rolling in, I gotta tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, but the reality is, is that they'll still do um, a monthly updates, monthly, uh, and the monthly, monthly reports are always super extensive. So someone's going to always need to summarize those monthly reports. They're yeah. still going to do long ATVs. It's just not every week is going to be a long ATV. Yeah. So someone's gonna Maybe once a month, days. if that. They still do ask it, um, or um, calling all devs, which is going to need need to be summarized by by people because the the answers and everything like that. So I don't think anyone who summarizes stuff is going to have to worry about it. It's just some of their things are not going to be the more popular things like ATV summaries won't be as sought after anymore because they're going to try to limit it a little bit. So the next question is, with the new condensed formats, will it be easier to, sorry, will it be easier for Relay to do more transcribing? And this is also from Brivals84. Um, so I'm going to address this one myself. Um, with this change, we're, we've been talking about it before, but with this change, we're going to talk more about uh, what our summaries look like. Um, I think we're going to try... This isn't official, and it's not necessarily going to happen. But I think we're probably going to try and go away from uh, full transcripts simply because it is a lot of work. And mm -hmm. um, probably go more towards actually covering everything better, but doing it with summaries instead of with transcripts. Because actually a summary is much faster than a transcript is. And yes, I know <laughs> they're going to hate us for it because we are interpreting what they say. But so is their fan base. So, ha. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, and yes, we do occasionally get a message from CIG going, yeah, you screwed up our, our intent here. So it only happens once every six months or so. So that's not too bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, now the next question is in the last RTV with Chris Roberts, he mentioned that they need uh, creation of moons and planets down to a week or less. Any idea how they would be able to do it, Mr. Squarepeg? Pipeline. Yeah. So basically, you get all the biomes down, so you have all the plants and the animals and the buildings and everything for that for various worlds are already created. And when you go to create a new world, you go, okay, what type of world is this? Oh, it's a snow world. Oh, I, I, I'm going to go get all the snow plants, and I'm going to go get all the snow rocks, and I'm going to get all mm. the ty different types of snow, and I'm going to get all the snow outposts, and I'm going to stick them all over this thing. And then, I, I, and then you know, but in, that's, that's instead of, yep. okay, now I'm going to go make all of these props. You're going, yep. I'm going to go use the existing props. <laughs> so the biggest thing, the Lego bricks. At, at this point, they actually have a pattern. They have gas giant, they have terrestrial world, they have dead terrestrial world, um, ice and world. then they have uh, ice ice world, smog planet, and um, like a like like a Venusian planet. I think, I think is what they have. So they have like a Mercury, a Venus, a Mars, a um, and like a Pluto is, is essentially what they have for planets, and plus gas giants and and just various types. 
And they also um, have like Delamar, which is like the asteroid type of the large asteroid type of deal. The type of deal. It's more like a moon. And then the, the thing is, is that they're going to have pallets for this is like an uh, like a Luna style moon. This is like an ice type moon. This is like a you know, and and they'll just say, oh, well, this is an ice moon with cryo geysers. Okay, we'll take the yellow palette and we're going to take the little like little geysers that we have on uh, on Selen and we're just going to put them on this yellow palette and then we're going to color them a little differently. Mm -hmm. So once they have that pattern worked out, once they have all of the base models worked out, you're going to see a lot of copy pasta, but it's not going to be so copy pasta that it's assaulting and offensive. Yeah. But I'm going to break some people's immersion and say, you're going to see some planets that have multiple biomes and those biomes are going to look very similar to other planets with similar biomes because terraforming. Yep. <laughs> so, oh, wow. This planet has the same plants and animals as the other planet. It is also terraforming. It also kind of <laughs> like they've shown before how much they can make something look different by changing textures slightly. You know, you can make, the color. You can make something that is really not, very different in terms of like props mm -hmm. and geometry um look quite different just by the way you dress it up um oh and they also had um yeah the, i guess i guess the venusian world is what you were talking about but remember was it a couple citizen cons ago they showed off that like acid world mm -hmm. that's a smog yeah. planet yeah so they invented they even in the latest um uh, Loremaker's Guide, they talked about how they invented a world type that's called Smog World, which doesn't actually exist as far as we know in reality, but you can think of it kind of like a cold Venusian planet, like Venus, but not as hot. Mm -hmm. So, like LA all over the, or Shanghai all over the place, <laughs> all the time. Oh, uh, uh, hello, Stormy. <laughs> the, it's quite, there are, there are really clever ways to trick the brain. You know, mm. like making a crowd of people, you can make a crowd of people about around, you know, around about 100 people with just nine or 10 different faces. And you can trick the human brain into thinking they're all different. But there are things that you can do, like just mirroring something and suddenly the brain's like, oh, this is, is this familiar? Is this not familiar? And yeah, there, there are nice tricks like that. And, it, you know, it might take them a couple of years to get the star system pipeline rolling just like it did with the uh, with the ship pipeline but now they can make a fairly large ship very quickly um mm -hmm. and they'll get there with planets too or in, in worlds what they'll end up doing if they need to really ramp up the speed is they'll um they'll so once they'll they ramp down um the ship creation because at some point you're going to make most of the ships in the game you'll move a lot of people over or you'll um, you'll end the contracts of some people and you'll hire more environmental artists, but you'll ramp up your uh, star system creation. Yeah. I don't think it'll ever get down to weeks though. I don't think, I don't think, see, I think, I think, um, for a I moon. Think, uh, well, I think, I think entire systems will be made within three months. Yeah. I think they can make an entire system in three months. I think so too. Which may mean a, a moon in like a week, but I don't think it'll actually be a week. I think mm -hmm. it'll be like, hey, spawn the moon, go through it real quickly over a couple of days, drop some outposts here and there, release it. And then people are like, hey, why is this outpost here and this outpost here? And they go, hmm, man, that's kind of fucked up. Let's go back and re replace up these outposts a little bit. So I think it, it, you'll still have about a month's worth of work for every, every planet or moon. It's just the initial creation will take less time. I wonder how many megabytes or gigabytes each moon or each planet will take. 42. Good, good answer. Um, that's actually kind of interesting because our next question from Hi is 42. <laughs> is that Which a question, is, I? It's a question. <laughs> um, I'm going to quote the book. And the book, as if I remember correctly, says, do you get it if you time six by nine? And yes, that is what the book says. <laughs> as far as I know. Okay, so next question is from Roast Beef Sandwich. Do you believe any game mechanics will actually make it into 3.3? That's actually a very interesting question. Do you think that they're going to get OCS done fairly easily and they'll be able to do some game mechanics? Or is it going to be this, like, pell-mell sprint to just get OCS in. Uh, He's scavenging it, maybe. Or first iteration. 
Uh, only if they can get the pothole in. Because there's no salvage ships other than the Reclaimer, and there's no way the Reclaimer is going to be able to, to do all the things you want to do it in. <laughs> okay, I, I, I think about the boat, too, but the boat is not in yet. So, yeah, you're right. Don't forget the, the Moji Glass is going to have basic salvage capability with the welder and thing. Yeah. That's your, that's your pot tool. Yeah. Oh, okay. My question is, if the mining laser is powerful as it is, how powerful do you think the salvaging laser will be? They're very, they're not very, very powerful. They've even said. I, like, I, like I, expect we... to, I expect to see the, uh, the, like, the vultures, like, 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 leeches on the bottom of, like, a, a like, a, like, a 600 high being, like, no, it would be like that matrix thing. The, you remember the matrix? Remember the matrix? They had the little squiggly thing. The, the, yeah. the, um, yeah, 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 yeah. The thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just, just be like, shh, shh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We're just gonna take a little piece here. We're gonna so, take your, your power plant. Goodbye. So, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, you, if you put a prospector against a vulture, which one do you think you expect to win? A prospector. It's just just gonna nom it up. A vulture. <laughs> A vulture might cut, cut pieces off of a prospector, but if it finds out it's there, it's just going to smash it with its with its claw, or um, just run into it. Because the, the prospector is like the freaking um, the caterpillar. Its biggest weapon is the fact that it is bigger than everything else, and you can just crush anything that's smaller than it. So I just want to quickly touch on something. Uh, Jiro Uzi, I'm sorry, I'm going to nail. I'm just going to totally mess up your name, Uziato. Said OCS and game mechanics are done by different teams. Um, o OCS is net code and gameplay is a gameplay team. Sort of. They both share engineers, though, which is a big problem. Like, the actual code is done by engineers. Those engineers are shared between those two teams. So... And very they also well. have QA. QA yeah. is not is not infinite in resource, and QA also can shared by, so many by both things. Teams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. QA so, is not just shared. QA is its own department, and they have to do everything at once. So, and they have three QAs or four QAs over LA, um, Austin, and uh, Manchester. I don't know if um, they may have QA at um, um, at Frankfurt as well, but they, they have you know four four teams of QA between those four studios. The main one being Austin, and I think Manchester. Yeah, Manchester uh, is a big two. one now are the main two and Austin's re responsible for the persistent universe. Yeah. So, and I've been there and there's like 15, maybe 16 people in QA and they can own. So there's the, just, there's a manpower shortage when it comes down to um, things you have 500 people, but only so many people can do so many things. And without OCS working, having salvaging in doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, just, it won't work. So, um, Paul, you've been to, you've been to the Austin Frank, office. To, 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 tell us what it's like. NDA. <laughs> Frankfurt's um, the most important QA department because uh, the Melissa person Estrada. in charge of QA there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to mention that um, that you know, OCS is a really you can't really underestimate the importance of OCS. They've been working on that feature for like nine or ten months now. Um, it's huge change to the game. Just mm -hmm. like the 64 bit was, it's another fundamental change. Cause this is basically the, Hey, we can't load an entire universe into memory. Did mm -hmm. you know that? <laughs> Cause your computer will explode. Um, They've done it with NASA supercomputers at such low fidelity that it just dots. <laughs> Drink, you said fidelity. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, I personally think they'll probably get OCS and one or two gameplay features in, um, and the rest will shift out. Uh, I think, the, oh, FPS AI, I think will stay in because it's almost done already. Yeah, FPS, um, FPS AI was al almost made it into, yeah. uh, 3.2, so I expect that either. They have it already. They keep showing clips of it. It's just janky right now so yeah. they don't want it in. it's gonna be janky it's gonna be janky for a while but i think ocs will make it less janky so because oh it's not boy. we just got like a flood of questions so i'm gonna start flying through these uh, <laughs> oh wow <laughs> best best squadron asks would you rather be the worst player in a good org or the best player in test squadron <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question uh, uh, uh drunk the answer, to, the answer to that is beer. That's the only answer you can give to that. 
Uh, Can I be an average player in an average org? Or I'll be okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just be an average player in, in test. That's what I'll be. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Nubsley asks if you could invent a holiday for Star Citizen, what would it be? So I have an answer for this. Ooh. Go ahead. I think that they should have a holiday after Operation Pitchfork that either memorializes or celebrates the day, depending on how ba- how bad or good it goes. <laughs> and, they'll do- and they should just call it Pitchfork Day. <laughs> there, is, there is actually a day that I, based on my research, because I guess wars start in November in the um, in the Star Citizen universe, but um, both the first Tavaran War and the current um, um, Vanduul War were declared by the UE in November. So the month of November should be Remembrance Month. <laughs> I, think October 10th, I think yeah. October 10th should just be Citizen Day. Totally. Yeah, it should be it should be Citizens Day. You know, it should be the founding of the UEE. Like that's what that's when. Uh, um, uh, that'd be an interesting. So Vidal Estra Day. <laughs> oh, I funny. I was looking at the careers page. They have a quote from John Pritchett. I like working at CAG because I get to make spaceships fly without risking people's lives. Quote, hopefully, or possibly damaging billions of dollars worth of hardware. <laughs> Um, Vidan asks, are you worried about CIG having to focus on both a massive presentation and a major patch that are scheduled 20 days from one another? Actually, it's only about nine days from one another. Um, Mm. what are the odds? What are the odds of the developer getting tunnel vision for one and completely shitting the bet on the other? No. Ooh. Yeah. I don't think it's that good. They've been working on the presentation since because they don't have to worry about gamescom presentation yeah. i can guarantee you they've been working on the presentations since the beginning of this year in terms mm-hmm. of what they want to do and how they're going to do it they have a general idea because that's the reason why three the roadmap they know what's going to be around 3.3 so they can build towards that what what else they can show off so. we're going game con that's only like a month away isn't it yep. like in the end of the uh, end of august um, middle of august so yeah middle of august okay yep actually T- t- quick tidbit because i think this is really funny nvidia announced that they're going to be uh, unveiling something at gamescom and then right after that amd was like hey we have a we have a presentation coming up a month before that we don't really know anything about it yet but we're gonna have a presentation <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that was pretty funny um so mayonnaise 15 asks do you think we'll be able to decorate the interior of our... We already know the answer to this question. Do you think we'll be able to decorate the interiors of our ships with vanity items? or And do you think players will be able to take those vanity items from wrecks of other people's ships? Yeah, we're going to get a, like a disco, hand, disco land of bobblehead. Don't know that. Uh, the answer to both of these questions is yes. Mm-hmm. We definitely can decorate our ships and you... I mean, you can take items from people. So yeah, I'm imagining you can take someone's fuzzy dice from their ship. <laughs> Um, I don't know what you don't, to. Don't touch my fuzzy dies. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Vinan also asks, I've seen backers suggest that ATV should be monthly now and be one hour or more since they would gather some things to talk about instead of the three minute we're working on it video. Uh, would you agree? Also consider that CR said that network backend is the main priority now. How... Would they show network code improvements on ATV? It's not the only thing they're working on. Nope. Plus Squadron 42. They had an entire episode of, of animations in Squadron 42. Mm. And we don't know what else they could show. They're just... They're... I'm, I'm going to address this because this is one of those things that a lot of people like are like, oh, Squadron 42 is never going to be finished. Panic. Flail. And it's like, well, watching... I have, I have enough second third hand experience with game development that i know that what cig is probably currently in the in the, in the state of um, is what many game developers uh reach which is the point where they've got most of the back end can it work stuff done and they're trying to make the can it work stuff look better and now they're looking at the game and being like is the game fun is this fun to play why or why not should How long do we need on... to make it fun to play? Because it's going to have to be either yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Like, do we want to focus on the main story? Do we want to focus on the side stories? Where do we want to want to take the uh, 
the the focus of our of of the gameplay and the fun stuff. And the reason why they don't want to show that off is because they have no idea. Because people could get really vested in the idea that you have all these side stories which have their own side side content and you know all fully animated in voice and can completely change the, the nature of the story. And then they have to cut that because it's like, man, that just wasn't fun. Like no one gives a shit about going through an entire like sequence with Trejo um, because it's like, way I gotta go fight some more slavers. I don't give a fuck about slavers. This isn't that in engaging, you know, or whatever. So, you, you, you know what seemed fun that I, I wish they'd bring back, but they probably won't? Say the ball. Remember say the ball? No. Yeah, say the ball. I love sad ball. I really want sad ball back, but that's, that's kind of, a, that's, uh, you know, watching like, uh, if you guys haven't, uh, if you guys are interested, watch, there's a documentary team called no clip, which was created by uh, crowdfunding who who's done things like they've worked with CD project red. They've worked with Bethesda and a couple other companies out there talking about the stories of how their games came to be. So they were, you know, they pulled footage, they've got interviews with these people. They talked about the like the process in which they go through and almost all of them have that point in their development where they're like all right which direction do we want to go we've got mm -hmm. this done we're ready to we're ready to move forward and comp complete the game or get the game to a beta or complete state but where do we want to go with it because you know and we've seen even chris robbins even had that same problem in um uh wing commander games that's the reason why we have the wing commander um secret missions packs that they did um, for Wing Commander 1, 2, and 3. I don't know if they did them for 4, um, but they had those, those like separate package, packs which ended up being kind of their own games because they cut the content out because they didn't, you know, didn't fit in or didn't make sense or too long that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I, I, I just wanted to bring that up because I know a lot of people mm -hmm. were... I actually really like that Chris addressed um, Squadron's schedule uh, last week. Um, and what he said made a lot of sense. We've known for a long time that they have the schedule. They have it. It's right there. But they are very sketched out about... The production team specifically is very sketched out about letting people see it. Because it's at a point right now where there's things, big pieces that can move. And that mm -hmm. could delay the release of the game significantly. So they don't want to show it to people because by necessity, the end of the Squadron 42 schedule is the release date. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> they're kind of beholden to whatever they put out. And also it's hard to release, put out a schedule that doesn't have spoilers about the game. And, and exactly. It. You got to strip the spoilers out. And so I think you just make it like, are the missions done? Yes. Check mark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, well, no, you have to have, yeah, you got mission one, mission two, and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's side but mission. No, I wouldn't prefer a, the monthly. Side mission two A. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's you, I missed it. Um, I wouldn't prefer a TV monthly. No. No, no. I ah. think you should keep it at weekly, and some of them will be long, and some of them will be short. But please put something in them, though. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Um, if you got little kids in them, like every other week, that's fine. I would be. Hey, I, they should. I think the. Whole, I think they should host the whole damn show. <laughs> you know, honestly, I think what they should be doing is they should be doing what they did this last time. And I know I'm gonna get crucified for saying that because everyone's like they screwed it up. But what they did last time was fine if they had new content, which is like, hey, we're working on salvage, we're working on OCS, we're working on Hurston, working on truck stops, working on the moons. Boom, five minutes you know, one minute for each, for each, uh, each topic. Then the next week, okay, let's go into depth about all of these things a little bit more. And then the last one is like an hour where you go into super in depth with each single like aspect yeah. of, of that patch. And then the next month you do the same thing. And then one month you, or one, one week a month you do just uh, squadron 42. Yeah. And then you, you continue to do that where you have something that's like super, Hey, here's an update. Do you, people who just care about shiny things. Hey, here's an update, which is more in depth, a little bit more shiny things. Hey, we have pretty much the same amount of shiny things, but a lot more explanation because I guarantee you most people who are complaining right now about how short ATV is when they get to the hour long ATV, they'll end up being like clicking <laughs> off after 10 minutes. Because I already fucking heard this. Fuck this. You'll yep. complain about how we have no information. We're By just the getting way, the same information with lots of fluff. It's like, that's, that's what ATV is. We <laughs> see that so much with, with uh, the transcripts and relay because um, if ATV is short, no one wants to read the transcript. They don't give a shit. If it's forty yeah. minutes, if it's forty minutes, 
Uh, mm-hmm. Everyone's reading the transcript. <laughs> <laughs> That makes sense, though. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Uh, it, oh, it totally makes sense. But it's it's just funny how how much I see it. Like you you post a transcript for a five minute ATV, and it gets like zero upvotes. You post a transcript for an hour long ATV, and it's like top of the sub for a week. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So moving along, Escape from Flavor Town twenty seventy seven asks. Will there be a Guy Fieri style NPC in Star Citizen that reviews various restaurants, bars, and the like across the Star Citizen universe? There I'm going to say yes. No, there is. They actually had their latest like lore piece update where they did like little like ads. One of them was called. Um, he it was something about like deals. It's like his his last name was like a pun on or like a like a like a play on deals. Like he's like it was like. It was like uh, like Herman deals in getting the best deal or, or a, yeah. a, the deal for you or something like that. And it was like showing like the, they described like like clips of people being in like in Gian markets or in, in like a, a Banu markets, like arguing and, and then everyone being like, yay, at the end. So it's, <laughs> it's like a little combination of like diners, drive-ins and dives and like uh, the uh, like like Guy Fieri and all those all those kind of uh Okay. Was, next... Will that mean that there's a a Rawdon Gamsey? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Can, like, can, can't they just makes... get? Can't they just get um you know uh uh Ramsey to come on? They just just have him voice a character who's totally. oh like the, like the guy from Top Gun, not Top yeah, Top Gear. Top Gear. Except yeah, it wasn't just have actually. Him come on. Except it wasn't actually him though. Yeah. It just was an impersonation of him. Probably the greatest impersonation in the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question is from Haramus. Um, ATVs become smaller now, and RTV won't have the previous ATV as a, as the subject anymore. Disco said it becomes more like the old RTVs. For example, the scheduling and sculpting episodes. What do you think about that? We've kind of. I love this. I love the sculpting episodes, especially when they make new animals, because you know you, you, you can't miss out on the crotch spider, the crotch dog, crotch whale. Yeah, you got all those crotch animals. It's fantastic. Can never also, have enough. Can never have enough crotch animals. <laughs> I also really like the fact that they had like Todd Pappy, and um, and Sean Tracy just kind of walking in and talking a little bit about what's exactly. going on. Exactly. I, I like me and Aerith. We're both nostalgic for this, but me and Aerith both want them to go back to when they when ATV was Happy just hour. an hour of them. ATV was just an hour of them bullshitting, or RTV. Sorry, was just an hour of them. RTV, bullshitting, yeah. And like randomly, developers would just come sit down and like spill the guts about stuff they weren't supposed to talk about. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss. I especially missed. Um, oh crap! I can't think of his name now. But the guy with the money hat. Justin. And, um, Justin Chambers. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And um and and Alexis and everyone sitting around just BSing yep. like you said. Yeah, I missed those days of a happy hour. But you do, that was that's the really interesting and cool thing about Star Citizen devs are they genuinely love what they are doing. And if you just mm-hmm. they just wander in, they will just talk. And it's yeah. brilliant. <laughs> I love I love um you know, uh, living in Austin because one of the, the perks is that uh, they often often CIG outnumbers the CIG employees outnumber the fans at Bar Citizens where they'll show up. <laughs> That's and awesome. Just, you hear them just talking about random stuff, like like Tyler come in and be like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna do this." Oh shit, I should have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Well, like, okay, that's what that, that's what happens when you get them get a couple of beers in, in them after after a um, while, huh? All or right. them talking about like, and I'm I'm waiting for this to be get finished so I can actually work on this or whatever. So it's 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 <laughs> nice to like. Here, here, the day to day, like a job, rather than like thinking of it as like this thing you want to pour over all the information. It's like, yeah, I'm just a QA guy, you know, I'm just just working on back end stuff right now. Yeah. So, the next question is from Repair All the Things. The question is, why are we getting functionality for repair ships to fix other ships in three point three, but have no ships coming that have that feature? I don't That's know. A good question. Because, <laughs> because no, I'm guessing that they want to build the underlying tech before they release the ship. 
which is kind of funny because they did that, but they did that the other way around with mining and stuff. Yeah, they know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's ironic. Well, the thing is, is that the tech that that does repair is the same thing that they're going to need for the like for Astro stations. I mean, the ones that need to do yeah. that, or at the, uh, the, the I'm guessing the truck stops will also have that kind of functionality built into them because they have to. And so the sh this functionality that you'll see at the truck stops being able to do that for the AI will be the same kind of functionality that you'll be able to do with your um, your crucible. Yeah, it's just. Uh, when is the station. wow we actually have no repair ships on the schedule right now none wow well there's okay. only two Vul the vulcan and the um crucible i know yeah. but you figured one of them if they're gonna put repair in you figure one of them would be on the schedule <laughs> that's, nope. that's why you got the question just now yeah i guess so i, mean, I didn't I think, realize that it was i thought the, i thought i'd seen the crucible on the schedule before so i was just it surprised used, it was planned before they did release the roadmap they had planned it yeah it might, it might have been on that big chart with all the ships and everything on it that's probably mm -hmm. where it was um but i would say if you're looking for something to fall out of 3.3 there's a real high chance that that's gonna be the one. Oh man they might that, just like mm -hmm. like maybe not like they have repair zero, at all but zero. the the fact that like the actual functionality to repair using another ship yeah i think i think they'll have tier zero repair with like your paw tool like being able to and they even talked about that the ability to walk out and just like spot repair um or maybe even having the back end working so again so that you can just go to a station and they'll repair it for you but not having to actually do it yourself yet all right so uh next question is from gaskin 627 the servers for lod have been oh yeah that, that was interesting the servers for lod have been down for a long time now any news on when they're coming back up um i cannot get a hold of the developer about it Finally realized what LOD is. Oh, yeah, I, 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 it occurred to me the same time it occurred to you. I was like, I'm, wait, I'm a paying customer and I want to play. I think we should all file complaints about this. What do you think? I think we should take it to the uh, uh, to the at the uh, what what is the um, the the federal the federal uh, FCC? Not the FCC. No, the Consumer Advocacy. The, consumer yeah, something. It's like or a Consumer Advocacy. You know. Oh, the better be the better be this bureau. Yes, uh, about about the scam of a game, such a scam. <laughs> hey, we could try and get it removed from Steam. So he what was the next it. question? Shut up! Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely punching down, though. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel yeah, about punching down like yeah, that. Yeah. All right. Fine. Um, Lord Kelmar is asking the next question. For a greener tomorrow, what is your preferred alternative spaceship fuel? Chocolate pudding or lemon custard? Chocolate pudding. Human, human, human waste. I'm, I, I, I quite, so chocolate pudding. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to say lemon custard. Did you um, see that Simpsons episode where Homer went to the science fair and he went past the alcohol-fueled car? And he was picturing in his mind, one for you, one for me, one for, one me. for you. One for me. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we need to address this last one real quick before we uh, we vanish for the day. Uh, Ravik asks, uh, OCS and Bind Culling are in 3.3. Are you expecting some real performance games gains, such as no more server stuttering, for instance, or more <laughs> FPS? Is, the, uh, is this the actual Jesus patch? I know this won't fix everything, but if it doesn't, I'll cry in real life. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, Nakara uh, and, and since all of you guys are actually really late, I wrote an article that I realized it was going to make into a video, but I realized it might be a better article for, for an op-ed piece for a relay, so i got to give it to you, which is called which essentially, I, it's called the myth of the Jesus patch. Yeah. Because there's no such thing as the Jesus patch. It'll never happen. There'll be never be a, a big, big release that's going to suddenly make the game playable for everybody. Stop believing in Jesus I'm, patches. I'm, I'm gonna actually, I, have, I have a question. I, At this point, just, wouldn't, I, the Jesus, wouldn't the Jesus patch just be, just be the game releasing? Yeah, that's essentially <laughs> what it is. It, the Jesus patch would be the game releasing. And that was actually my art, my, in my article. It's one of my oh, okay. It's like, it would just... It's not going to happen. It would be the game release, but 
we're so conditioned to how game releases because we hear it six months ahead of time that we don't really understand the nature of how iteration works in development the other so, problem is game, and they've already talked a little bit about this no go ahead game development can so many times be one step forward three steps back three steps forward one step back two steps forward five steps back it's just every single thing you know you add something in you don't know how it's going to react you got to counter that oh shit the counters actually had an effect oh shit and there's that um very true song of 9999 bugs on the wall fix one take it down 1,005,892 mm -hmm. bugs on the wall yeah and Masiva, without with all the shit i have to i have to say one thing at least you, at least we have legs <laughs> damn Okay, oh. um, I just wanted to mention that um, they've talked about this before. Network vine culling, for example, had to be done internally basically for June because they wanted to try and spend four months breaking all the bugs, killing all the bugs before October. Because basically what they're doing is they're despawning everything in the verse except for what's near you. And so they have to be able to have things like they have to be able to have quest markers appear accurately in the universe on an object that is no longer there. Um, it, it, there are very, very complex technical problems involved with these things. I personally, trying to manage expectations, I expect 3.3 to be quite broken when it comes out because mm -hmm. they are fundamentally changing a lot of the game's code and it will be better eventually. But in the they might have some serious growing pains in the mid in the in the interim. I mean, so you mean the PTU, not 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 the live release. No, I mean the live. Release, you mean no, the I, mean the li I think the live release live might be worse than three point two's live release. Three point three will probably be worse than three point one in terms of initial release. But by three point three point four, it'll be a playable game. And then 3.3.5 will break everything, and then they'll 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 they'll, they'll not fix it until 3.4. And then uh, by like 3.5, it'll be back to being super stable again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so it's, it's like a TikTok kind of release. Yeah, like exactly. it's, <laughs> it's always been like that with Star Citizen. Like mm -hmm. one patch will will fix stability, then then they'll add new new stuff, then they'll break the stability, and then they'll add they'll fix the stability. It's yeah. it's just the nature of how games are developed, how software is developed. You fix one thing, this thing over here breaks. You fix that thing it breaks uh, the other thing over here and sometimes you just hope that you fixing more things every time you fix something it breaks less until it doesn't break anything is, is the goal but yep. it's never gonna happen the, the windows of open development if they, if they i'm gonna say i gotta say if they pull it off and 3.3 .3 comes out and it has all the stuff that they want in it like not necessarily everything that's on there now but everything that they identify in the next couple weeks mm -hmm. and it is stable they should have like gold rain from the ceiling in their offices because <laughs> that will be amazing. <laughs> you mean you mean the they, they, it's all going to the the million man the million mile high club? Yeah, that's right. Now, I will say that we have actually seen OCS work because they've had OCS in game since two five two four. Um, where they um, they called the back then they called it the mega map, yeah. Um, and the mega map had two stages. It was the early stage was the offline mode, and then the the stage that they were going to be adding in, which was a combination of the OCS and vine calling, uh, which was mega map, um, was was going to be added in later. And they added it in already. So if you load up the game right now in the Star Citizen. You load up Arena Commander. It loads up all of the maps of Arena Commander, all the ships of Arena Commander, and has it there ready to be streamed in. But that's the reason why, if you load up Arena Commander on an HDD, like a normal hard drive rather than a than a SSD, then you just you load it up, and it'll it'll still load up faster in Arena Commander than it will in the universe because it's streaming those assets in. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was you could used to you used to be able to load into your hangar get drunk and then load into arena commander and your character would still be drunk even though the, the drunk effects only lasted like a minute or so in, in game um so th that's how quickly things could load into uh, says in, uh, the in, owner yeah. of the space bar yeah right <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just gonna say, I'm taking 
I'm, I'm locking your ship so you can't get out of there when, after you, you get drunk because the likelihood of you slamming into, into the, the pub because you're drunk flying is too damn high. Yeah, make, make, sure, make sure you call a starliner or something for them, but so they don't drive, fly home, right? All right. So, so, so it's ahead. important to remember that OCS is not just some mythical technology that doesn't exist. They have had it for a while. The issue is making it work on an online environment compared to an and offline environment. in a gigantic oh, environment, oh, too, which is yes. oh, the other problem. Oh, we, we all know that you're a shell, so just, just admit that it's the technology is decades away again. Decades away. 90 days tops. Um... Oh, we always, Tom Trustworthy, we always say that the CIG won't release a buggy patch, but then they do. So, yeah. <laughs> Every patch is buggy. Like 3.2 is probably the least buggy of the patches they've recently It's pretty recently. damn good, but it's still buggy. But it's still got bugs in it. <laughs> you know? In fact, there are still bugs that I'm. I've been playing quite a bit lately, and there are bugs that b bother me every time I play, and I keep looking at the patches going, have you fixed this yet? No, it's not in there. <laughs> like, when you get damaged in the uh, the prospector, um, you have this giant fog cloud around the front of your cockpit forever afterwards. You have, mm -hmm. to, you have to do an insurance claim on your ship to get it to go away. <laughs> um, anyway... Uh, we, we're going to wrap up. We're over time, but we actually just made up for the time where we were late. So it's perfect. Yeah. Um, and sure. But do we make up for the, t do, do make up for the time when, when we didn't have sound? Uh, that too. That's the question. That too. <laughs> um, Shiver, what do you have coming up? Where do we find uh, you? Nothing out of the ordinary this week. Um, dead air, Wednesday, bass, tune in, even though Quatch has completely blocked them. But that doesn't mean you can't listen. Uh, head on over to the base.sc slash shoutcast. Shoutcast. And Fastcart, what do we have coming uh, up for you? I don't have anything coming up. I just, uh, we just did um, for a Friday night show. We gave away a package. And too bad for people who didn't show up because you might have a chance to win the package. But Was this we gave one away last package? night. Sorry. Terrible. Anyway. No, no, it was actually the scalpel. No, I'm kidding. Win it was a package. It was a squad and put it to. I want to hear what Shiver is thinking right now. To, <laughs> so uh, many goddamn things I cannot say on Twitch. <laughs> it was a thought to send the squad and put it to combo package. Excellent. And that was last night. And um, as far as future, I don't have anything planned at the moment. Cool. Uh, Paul, the Astro Pub. What do you have coming up? Um, Normal kind of play I may, I may switch away from star citizen on thursday because i used to do non-star citizen games on thursday and sunday um but i'll it'll be do, we'll be doing um i've got another galactic historian questions um that i'm gonna be doing on monday that should be released on tuesday um talking about the technology like how does the technology progress how how has it progressed since like the 20th century to the 30th century that we're in right now in game awesome um and then i'm also working on the first actual episode of Galactic Historian, which is kind of like made for YouTube. It's going to be, I'm going to premiere it on, on the channel at some point. Um, but I'm also stepping away from the lecture series, which is my live stuff, um, because it just takes a lot of time. And that on top of everything else is kind of taken to a back burner. This has already done like 30 episodes of that. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, pretty much normal stuff. And then in, in about... About two hour, 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 forty five plus out of forty five. I'm gonna be doing. Um, I'm gonna have uh, this guy up here in that corner. <laughs> He's gonna be with me. Um, with uh, HG Vertigo, um, Nighthawk Zale, and uh, uh, a few well, for the captain's table. So a lot of drinking. Captain's table. A lot of drinking. A lot, of, a lot of what we talked about now, but with more alcohol. Pod set and, Saturday. And... Gotta love it. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. That's it for the show. And come and watch me in like less than two hours on uh, on the captain's table. And uh, have a great weekend. And, and remember. Uh... Go ahead. No, Are I'm going to let you go. Uh, go. Okay, I was going to say. And remember, I'm not racist. Some of my best ships are black. <laughs> <laughs>